Welcome again to the GRM podcast. We've got two special guests in today. We've got Elliot Wallace from Hull KR and we've got Owen Harrison, also from Hull KR. Two uh, recent City of Hull graduates who's both signed for Hull KR. Um, how are you going, lads? Are you guys all right? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Both of you recently made debuts for KR, which is fantastic to see. Um, City of Hull has been a great pathway, both local lads from Hull. You played for Skirla, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And you played for West Hall. Yeah, I'm Beverly, yeah. Beverly, yeah. Did you play against each other? No, I'm, I'm a year younger than him. Right, yeah. And I used to play a year above my age as well. So Yeah, like, I, I, I used to play a year above my age, but for like a different club. Didn't right? you play like open age as well for Skirla? Yeah, yeah, in my like, last year. How old were you when you played open age? What was yeah, it? 15, yeah, 15 or 16. Yeah, that's class. 15 year old playing open age. Were they in CL at the time? Yeah. That's mental. Uh, <laughs> I don't think many people would know that about you as well. That's, like, that's crazy, that. I went from, because I, I was playing up here at Beverly, as soon as they all... Like got scholarship, like academies or got jobs. Yeah, a lot of them left side to leave to go to Westall. Right, and then as soon as Westall finished, I went straight to academy. Do you think that um, Westall was a big help in you getting signed, or was you really sort of in the in the mix of getting signed by KR anyway? Uh, well, on my last, I had my last. I was already, I'd got picked for England, and then I broke my leg like real bad, so I was out for a good year, and yeah. that was that was my last year at Beverly, so I didn't get to play anymore, and then. I was signed for Westall after that, so that was probably a big help in getting me back fit, definitely. They had some good coaches there, Phil Winley and uh, Lee Goldsbury Miller. You might know Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, His dad, good. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they were probably big. There was, I had my first game back for them after a few years, and then when we ended up winning everything there was to win, so there probably was a big help, yeah. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen, uh, Briggsy is one of our sports writers. He wrote a fantastic article on Owen and, and touched on the trouble that you guys won together. Yeah, he was... He was on, never miss a game. It was there for everything. Yeah. Well, I've obviously wrote an article on Elliot, and uh, my favourite line in that article is when I asked Elliot his favourite memory from uh, being in the academy. And as me thinking it might be, you know, winning a, a game, coming back from like a, a couple of points down and winning the game, sort of thing. But what, what did you say was your favourite memory? Do you remember? Uh, it was the dens one. Uh, the yeah. dens we made in Cyprus. I got slated by a few yeah. people for that. <laughs> a few yeah. people was like, <laughs> "Is he an idiot?" <laughs> so, if you don't know, apparently Elliot Wallace's uh, favourite memory from being in the academy was making a den while I was on a, a, a camp in, in Cyprus. To be fair, the camp looked class, to be fair. Was it, was it good? Uh, <laughs> we, we just made the best out, out of it. It was like, it was like a, abandoned rooms. Was it? Yeah, it was like abandoned rooms. And I, I think we slept in that den for the full week. It was like three bunk beds pushed together and we got like all the quilts and like tucked them in the sides and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> Who else was in this den? Uh, there was me, I think there was Liam Betts, uh, Rob Branton, Tom Job, and... Kai Reef. Super. Yeah, most of them are left now. So yeah, both of you made your debuts uh, recently for um, Hull KR. Um, what would you say is the biggest thing you've learned from that step up from like academy to, start of your own, from academy to being a pro? Uh, it's a lot, it's just miles more chilled out. Like they, they don't expect ridiculous amounts of you, which I think they do in academy because like you, the, you were, we were the older boys. So they were expecting like us to put our foot forward and, at first team, they were just expecting like you to do all the little things right. So they're not expecting you to run over the top of anyone or absolutely whack anyone. Mm. They just want you to do everything right and make sure all the little things are right. And that's what they're more bothered about, I think. And it's, for us, we grew up just wanting to run hard and tackle out, basically. Yeah. But like now we actually have to concentrate on what we're doing. And yeah, it's it's like I don't know. Yeah, it's just the little things, really. Like you, you don't when you're at academy, you don't really think of, and then you're, they're like, "Oh, you're doing that wrong." I'm like, "Well, I've never been taught that before." Yeah, yeah. What about you, Elliot? Really? What, what's your biggest? Uh, I think like with academy, it's all sort of like a rush to sort of make the best out of you. As whereas the first team, like it's all like the nerd have got plenty of time, you know, to sort of look after you. Mm. Yeah. There's this scene where Owen is class ball off. Um, Jez Litton and schools a try against Newcastle. Um, do you miss some of the lads who have gone over to sign for it? Do you see him off the? I day? speak to a few like Karen. I message like Karen tagged me in some uh, uh, thing on Facebook the other day for our six year friend anniversary or summer. <laughs> Oh, and God. so he's like, so I miss you lads. And I was like, oh, I miss you too. <laughs> that, that, that was about it. And I keep in touch. Like me and Brownie have got the same agent. So we go up to see him like every now and then. I say, yeah. Because if people don't know, City of Hull is sort of a hybrid academy. So it was a joint academy between FC and KR. And basically you get signed by FC or KR. 
So I was just interested to know whether you guys still speak to the guys who sort of cross the black and white sort of thing. Well, you lot, are, the younger lot are still in a, like a group yeah. chat, yeah. yeah so yeah, you yeah, speak yeah. to most of them. Like, are you still young enough to play for under 19s? Yeah, yeah, I think that's where I'll be playing in two weeks when I'm back from my injury. Right, yeah. What have you done injury wise? Uh, it's called a stress reaction, so it's not the, there's nothing that you can really do for it but rest. Right, yeah. Yes, but I'm just coming back for it now. That like, sounds like my idea of a dream, that. <laughs> do, yeah, do nothing. <laughs> We're going to touch on the fact that Elliot's a bit of a maverick. And uh, maverick means that you like to uh, horse around and do things which isn't really normal behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> so touching on um, being a maverick, I've got this picture I wanted to show Elliot just so I can tell us the story behind it. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's like, Can't be that bad. What picture? <laughs> bear, bear in mind, the last time I saw Elliot and Owen was at Sean Lunt's testimonial, and they weren't wearing anything. So uh, <laughs> mentioning mentioning pictures, they're probably a bit worried. Um, Owen had like uh, what's his name, Freddie Mercury. He had like a Freddie Mercury tash going. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that was like my dream. I just wanted to be uh, Prince Charming. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've got a mate, and uh, his sister's got two horses. So I was got onto him. I was like, look what. Why don't we, everyone's going to be rocking up to pro prom in like Rolls Royces and like Jags and stuff. I was like, why don't we just turn up on, on horses? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Being a maverick, being like not a normal thing to do. So Elliot Wallace decides to go to school prom and back of two horses. So I tried to do a bit of digging of, of you two. And um, so I asked Jason Netherton, your your academy coach, obviously you're, you're with uh, Tim Machines now. And I said, right, have you got any dirt on the lads I can bring up in this podcast? And he said that Owen's pretty sensible, like he keeps himself pretty straight lined. He said the only thing he could say to wind you up is the fact he had braces for pretty much your whole life. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, yeah, for some reason he rented me for ages for that. I had literally had him. It was my fault because I just kept missing my appointments. <laughs> From Jay started coaching me the second he retired, at, so like under 15. Yeah. And I got need and my teeth got messed up real bad. <laughs> and then, so I got braces maybe when I was 16 and I didn't get them off till my last year of academy. So I had them on for like 30 months, like maybe Imagine like, because yeah. I just kept missing my appointments. <laughs> and as soon as I got them off, I was just walking around like just smiling and run for ages. Yeah. <laughs> Did having braces like hinder you playing rugby at all? No, not really. Well, at, at the start, it was because they were like all of it. They just kept ripping my lips to pieces yeah. and I couldn't get... Like, yeah. Got little, like, yeah. On to them just dig into your yeah, you, you, they put, yeah, you put like bands on to like set your jaw in place. Yeah, and yeah. if you don't have them on, they just like... And I remember I got them on... We played the under-16s derby at Bishop Burton. Mm. And I got them on the day before. And I remember we kicked off. And as I set off running, the first thing that happened, it just went straight through the top of my lip. And I was running, trying to pull it out. Oh and in God. the end, I just pulled it forward and just ripped like the big yeah, girl from my lip. Well, yeah, there was pain in the ass, but... Yeah. Don't mind, how was it? And obviously, I asked, I asked the same question about Elliot. And he said... Um, it's a bit easier with Elliot to find funny stories. You said that, um, mention the time that you got angry and wanted to kill him. Oh, <laughs> was that every, like time? every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, watching you both play, you're both really aggressive players. I remember watching the Catalans game and they came back and won it in the last minute. Like, you could just see like, the aggressiveness, trying to get that ball up the line sort of thing. And that was, that was pretty, tr I won't mention referees and stuff, but that was a, that was a pretty dodgy game, wasn't it? I was watching that now, you played over. They're just a team you really want to beat as well, yeah. because of the French. Yeah, I know, yeah. They're <laughs> it's weird though, because they're French and the cats beat you, but they are all proper, like, getting, yeah. yeah. They're you're getting right, your isn't? first in the same French stuff to you, and like, oh, it's making your own you don't know what they're saying. I hate you too. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to ask you. In an interview, Mitch Garbutt said that you are the weirdest person he has ever met. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'll stick uh, up fairly, okay. yeah, because... I'm not the weirdest. It, yeah, no, he, he's, said, he's, he's... He said <laughs> you and Ryan Shaw. <laughs> yeah, he, Ryan's he's, way weird. He's very weird. And he's, <laughs> no, I'll admit he's, he's not a very... Weird, not weird. He's just... He don't think, like, normal, like a normal person. Yeah. But at my age, I found that funny because I'm the same age as him. All the older lot don't find it funny. And I'm, tr I'm trying to not laugh because now I don't want to be on his side. Yeah. <laughs> but then Shaw is even weirder but then, because the older yeah. lot are, is it? Yeah, Ryan Shaw's an absolute weirdo, isn't he, really? Yeah. He's, he's definitely weirder than Elliot, but Elliot is up there, definitely. Yeah. You know, like, sometimes I'll do something, yeah, and everyone will do proper blank because I'm the young lad, and he'll do something, like, similar, and everyone's like, ah! <laughs> 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 Give me an example, things like what? Like, say if I, if I cup someone, yeah, <laughs> feed them an egg sand. <laughs> <laughs> it <ain't fu> <laughs> it's not funny, yeah. <laughs> but if he does it, yeah, the, full, the full room is absolutely screaming. <laughs> 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 Come on, man. <laughs> um, so, serious questions. Obviously, you're both really young. 
and FC have a reserve grade. And obviously, you're you you're are you too old for the academy now? Yeah, it was my yeah. last year last year. Yeah. Obviously, Eddie, you still get to benefit from being part of City Hall Academy. Um, so this is probably more of a question for you, Owen. Do you think that KR should have a reserve grade or not? Definitely, they were planning on doing one last year. They did have it planned for this year. Um, I don't know for what reason why it didn't happen and it fell through. But it's definitely the next step because I. I'm on loan at the minute, and from academy to championships, a ridiculous step up. Like, yeah, yeah. You're Drew, you're Drewsbury, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I've, I've been like, I've enjoyed Drewsbury, and I think it's quite good. Like, and it is a big step up. So I think to bridge the gap, like reserve grades probably is like the better thing. But and it helps the old lot come back from injury. So you're playing like, imagine working, getting to play against like Gazellis and stuff like that for yeah. FC. It benefits us because we probably play FC quite a lot. Yeah. And when we had a reserve grade against FC when I was in my second year, yeah, second year of academy at Craven Park, and that was quality. Yeah, there was lo- there was probably like three or four thousand people yeah. there. It's, it's a proper derby because you get local lads playing. Yeah. When it's reserve grade, you got guys from East Hall, guys from West Hall going at it to, against each other, and that's what we miss. So hopefully you guys get reserve grade next year. Yeah. Well, the plan is that they are, but they said it last year as well. So. <laughs> to be fair, there's there's sort of talks as to whether the reserve grades work or not because. Um, FC is a reserve grade at the moment. They've got uh, a mixture of um, players on the fringe and community players, like NCL players. And so if you can't fit a full team of reserve players, is it really working? So that's that's the debate, isn't it? So, so obviously guys who've um, watched this platform for the past few years, you know about GRM Mini, something I want to bring back. It's where I used to go on a weekday uh, filming the festivals of like under sevens up to under tens. And they asked these lads what got them into rugby. Um, Chris Wellen. Danny Owen. No idea. Albert Kelly. Cool. Who do you most play like in the Super League? What player do you think you play like? Steve Wellen. Chris Wellen. Who do you play for? Salford. Salford. Steve. Right, why do you guys play rugby? Because, because it's a good sport. Yeah, it's a good sport. And you get quite a lot of money. Because I like <laughs> being rough. So yeah, so I asked these kids um, what got me into rugby. One kid says loads of money, which uh, those of us in the know, no, that's debatable. Depends what club you're wrong, son. Yeah, <laughs> depends what club you're playing for. So um, another kid says because he, he likes being rough. What got you two into rugby to start off with? Edith? To be honest, I used to hate doing it, like anything, like for, for the first time. But so my mum would have to make me go to things and, like. I've done all sorts, like, you wouldn't even believe I've done <laughs> musical theatre. <laughs> so to be fair, I'm not even surprised at that. <laughs> There'll be some bad photos of that somewhere anyways. And uh, I think, yeah, so my mum just basically made, made me go down and I didn't, I didn't want to be there at first. So <laughs> yeah, I just got into it. Hey, so what about you, Owen? What about you? Oh, my mum took me, my mum and dad took me to Beverly for the first ever time and I, the next week, they made me go out, I was throwing tantrums. Like, I was about five, I didn't want to go back. I was like, yeah, I, I don't want to play. Did your dad play professional? Yeah, my dad and my uncle both played. Was he a captain? Okay, yeah, he was, yeah. He played for about 10, 12 years. Yeah, Chris Harrison. Yeah, there we are. So, obviously, was there any pressure you coming through sort of thing? Son of Hulk, PR's captain, so... Everyone used to put pressure on it, but my dad was quite thingy with me when I was younger. Like, he was so strict as in, like, rugby. If I'd do anything wrong, that's because he was my coach. As soon as I'd moved to Wessel and stuff, and, like stopped it was stopped being my coach he's pr- like he probably settled down basically like yeah. it was more like just enjoy your rugby yeah i think it was warrington's coach or one of the super league coaches who also coaches amateur and he said that you know he, when he was his son's coach he didn't really get on with his son but as soon as he stopped doing that he became his son's dad and that's he enjoyed that way more than being the coach so yeah, yeah since like I've, he stopped coaching me he just loves coming to like he'll be at every game yeah. but he'll never ever if 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 I've done something wrong and he wants to tell me, he'll, he'll like subtly tell me. When I was younger, he'd just rinse me. Yeah, but he won't be a coach anymore. Was, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I think the average age of the guys who watch this stuff is like 14, 15, uh, which, is, which is when you apply to be a, a, scholar, a scholar, to be fair, join a scholarship. Uh, what advice would you give to young lads who want to make it pros as you guys? Just enjoy it. Uh, if, as soon as it, like, it starts getting the fun taken out of it, that's when most people quit. Like at Academy once they've gone from playing on a weekend with the mates to then it becomes a bit more serious. Yeah. Everyone starts quitting, so you've just got to, like if you've got a good group of lads to enjoy it with, it's miles easier to play because you it's not as stressful if that makes sense. But a lot of the younger lads last year quit, didn't they? Because they weren't playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you've just got yeah, to, just got you, you've got to get to through that bit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and just don't listen to anything negative. Like, just don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. There they are. Mm.
Right, so this has been Elliot Wallace and Owen Harrison from Whole KR, two super duper lads from the academy, have come through, signed professional contracts, uh, made their debuts, and they're going to smash it. Both really talented. I watched them play when they were younger, and I think they're going to do really well. So, cheers for coming on, lads, and uh, hopefully, see you again soon. Thanks.